folks. She is the national director of the Remembrance Project. It's You can go to the RemembranceProject.org and find out more about this. Welcome back to the program. We have Maria Espinoza. Maria, good morning to you. Good morning, Paul. Thanks so much for having me on again. Yes, absolutely. I, I want to talk about the events of the day, but first I want to give you a, a chance again to remind our listening audience uh, what you're trying to accomplish with the Remembrance Project. Well, we started in 2009 in Houston, Texas, and we are a voice for the victims who've been killed by illegal aliens because those are 100% preventable killings and murders, and they are permanently separated from their loved ones, and we're trying to shine a big light on that, and President Donald Trump is doing a, a fantastic job for us. As you know, he embraced the Remembrance Project and our angel moms and dads and families, and he has been, you know, um, listening to us ever since uh you are uh, yeah you you are exactly right he he has done an amazing job of getting this out into the forefront and i want to talk about uh you know how this is going to affect the midterms because we've got some new developing news uh that happened yesterday on that but before we do uh, uh maria last week we had uh you know the donald uh, the donald Donald Trump, he goes he goes to Kansas, Topeka, has these big rallies, and you have Chris Kobach, who's the Secretary of State there, who's running for governor, and he made some um, connections that a lot of people don't make about the September 11th terrorist attacks and immigration. Uh, did you happen to observe this? I did see most of that rally. Um, we have events, seems like every other night, um, that are very important to attend. But yes, Chris Kobach actually has been a friend of ours for, we've known him for about seven years now. He was our MC, uh, Paul, dear, at our first ever national conference for victim families in Houston. He MC that event, and Donald Trump was our, our keynote speaker there. So we know Chris very well, and you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, we have memorialized two of the families of, uh, of the 9-11 victims, uh, family members, and that was because they, you know, came to us and we got to know them. But um, he, he's correct in that, you know, 19 of those that entered with a visa, you know, five of them had overstayed. You know, 19 of the terrorists entered with a visa. And in my opinion, Paul, if they lied on that application for the purpose of, of coming here to the United States, then that that um, negates the entire application. But five overstayed their visas, and four of those five uh, were stopped for speeding while they were here and on the, when their visa had expired. And three of them, uh, three of the four, were the pilots um, of the terrorist attack. So a lot of horrific uh, carnage and all preventable if we had a strong immigration enforcement you're exactly right and and that's why i know this is you know right up your alley and it's just amazing um you know uh, when i was reading his comments um you know from that rally i was like oh, my goodness you know that's exactly right you know people mm -hmm. want to say that immigration you know is about or immigration policy or having a policy where the uh, american people and our elected officials decide how people come here and uh, they say that, you know, this is racist, this is based on, you know, some sort of bigoted mentality. And it's like, no, it's not. This is about no. trying to protect folks from, from violence and bad actors and also protect our economic freedom as well. Absolutely. And Chris Kobach uh, hit the nail on the head when he said that we need to stop weaponizing immig our immigration system. And that's exactly what's happening. You know, during the la previous administration, I was in a hearing in Texas where the president of the Border Patrol Union for the Laredo sector um, mentioned that uh, or testified that um, they were told from the higher up, this is the Obama administration now, if there were six or fewer illegal aliens crossing across our border to let them pass, and if they were carrying 40 or less uh, drugs to let them pass, this is outrageous, Paul. There's no enforcement. There was no and that's previous administration. And now with President Trump, you know, things are different. But think of all those people who had entered during Obama's entire presidency. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a story right now. We're talking with Maria Espinoza from the Remembrance Project. I'm looking at a story right now from the Daily Caller. 
uh, where Henry Rogers writes that an illegal alien from El Salvador who was previously deported from the United States was charged with rape and a list of other charges after a woman in Long Island, New York, was attacked, beaten unconscious, and then was raped. Uh, Marti- <laughs> Martinez, uh, Martinez Reyes, 24, was charged with rape, sexual assault, and other assault charges in order to be held without bail. Fox News reported Martinez Reyes allegedly followed his female target around until he felt like he could get away with raping her, according to police. Martinez Reyes originally entered the country illegally in 2010 before he was deported. However, he illegally entered the United States again in 2014, according to ABC7. Again, preventable crimes, and it is it is unbelievable that that you know, we just had this whole two weeks of Kavanaugh and this whole situation mm-hmm. where the left postures about how much they care about women. And yet they, they would say, no, 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 you're racist if you want to prevent this person from entering the country. Exactly. And our baseline is this. We don't have to allow anyone into our country, Paul. And that's the baseline. Now, should our businesses here need additional workers, then that's that's fine let's screen them extreme vet them but also we need to get americans off of the welfare system let's get these individuals back to work if they're um able-bodied and you know put them in train them put them in these uh positions and we don't have to open up our borders and look we have we have a huge job in front of us right now you know to vet the people who are already here and of course we're not for an amnesty not even a daca amnesty those individuals are 20, about 24, 25 years old and all the way up to 37 years old now. And think of this. On the, according to our 14th Amendment, if they've had children here in the United States, they're anchor babies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're U.S. citizens. So this, this problem should have been resolved decades ago, but the Obama administration certainly exasper, exasperated, exasperated that. Yes. But now we have... Yeah. <laughs> Now, now we have the uh, stakes uh, are, are really being taken up a notch for the November midterms. I'd love to talk about that with you, Maria Espinosa, everybody. Ha- House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy uh, will introduce a bill this week that will fully fund President Donald Trump's planned wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, thereby setting the midterm elections up as a referendum on immigration policy, according to Breitbart News. What are your thoughts on this, Maria? Long time coming. Um, I'm I'm not for Kevin McCarthy. I believe that um, Congressman Jim Jordan out of Ohio would do a better job. And, um, you know, so um, I think Jim Jordan would actually see this through. But, you know, some of these um, establishment politicians are just talk. And obviously we have a majority in the House and the Senate, and they still could not get – the funding for President Trump for the wall, as he requested. So um, I think illegal immigration certainly is at the top of the list all across the United States. Do you see a trend? I understand what you're saying about Kevin McCarthy. I am mm-hmm. skeptical. Okay. Um, but then again, it's it, it, with the Kavanaugh situation, and you have these 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 rhinos um, who are mm-hmm. are standing up now. I mean, Mitch McConnell, he didn't bow to the media's beat there. Uh, Lindsey Graham, um, Susan, mm-hmm. Susan Collins. And I'm, I'm just wondering if, if, if they are now kind of leading uh, because they've seen the example of President Trump. I mean, President Trump refuses in all these circumstances – uh, to to dance to the to the traditional drum th- that the media and this you know this phony this forced altruism that they they try to act like that there's some sort of you know superior moral force the president trump sees right through it he refuses to dance to the beat that they want him to and now all of a sudden you know uh, you have these republicans who normally have been status quo i don't want to offend anybody i don't i don't want to get you know take the heat from the media, and now they're kind of starting to stand up. I'm not, I'm not saying that that is what's happening right. with Kevin McCarthy. I'm just saying maybe, maybe that's the trend here. Well, I think that President Trump certainly has given them a backbone. But you know, Paul, how long will they uh, be on good behavior like this uh, when Daddy leaves the room? You know, I hate to put it that way, but it just seems that they should have been doing this um, from 
day one when they were elected and the reason they are, were elected, but instead they want to um, fill their campaign coffers with the blood money from these open borders group groups while our children are filling America's coffins. Paul, and that's what we have to look at. I, I want someone in there like Jim Jordan who is proven, who is solid, who we don't have to worry about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when the wind blows, he might change his mind. But, you know, with um, that's why Jim Jordan is, is my pick. But also, you know, we do have to, it's up to us to continue placing pressure. But most importantly, um, t- turn out to vote this November and uh, come November 7th, the day after voting, the last day to vote, we need to be looking for our America First candidates. We need to be, you know, hold the line with the uh, more conservative group now, but we need to look within our own groups locally, identify those who are good candidates, and support them all the way through election. And um, should they be elected, you know, that's what's going to change because we're here in Washington, D.C. now, and um, I can see clearly um, that these individuals, these politicians, many of them will not do what's right because they want to be reelected and have those push positions and, mm-hmm. and be, you know, glorified. They're like treated like royalty when they go to their district. So, you know, they're servants and that's what they need to do. Um, we're talking uh, Maria Espinoza from the Remembrance Project. I, I've just got one more question. You, you mentioned uh, and I can I, I really, really appreciate your skepticism here for, you know, the Republicans who have had a lot of time to, to do things and they, and they haven't. Um, you mentioned the campaign situation. So I imagine the campaign finance situation. I imagine you've looked at some of these reports you, that, you know, hey, which Republicans <laughs> are taking money from groups that want to keep the border open. And so, you mm-hmm. know, ideally, you would want somebody who hasn't taken money from those groups to be in a position of power and authority. Yeah, very true. That's really sad, Paul. You think about what you just said. You know, you know, this is money that helps them uh, with their reelection, and instead of going out and pounding the pavement, um, you know, they want to take this easy route. They get, you know, more and more money. They sit back and they get farther and farther away from their constituents and from the Constitution and what this country is set out how our government works and that they do belong to the people that they serve the people instead and that they should be legislating for the the benefit of our country and its citizens you know instead they're legislating for uh, promoting open borders and you know basically selling out american as you know um, immigration covers just about every aspect uh, of you know education we're looking at talking about medical, obviously, uh, uh, public safety, um, you know, tax dollars, how many billions of dollars, you know, what, $135 billion is what illegal aliens cost our country, plus the remittances that are sent, where our money is sent out of the United States. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there, there's so much that hinges on this immigration issue that we really have to take president donald trump's lead mm-hmm. in placing america first and that's why i think that he won and i think that's why uh, people see look at you know you have a mil- half a million manufacturing jobs you know uh, you've got four million people off of welfare where obama increased it almost double you know he wanted those voters so you know uh, i think president trump is giving the confidence back to the american people I completely agree. Maria Espinoza, folks, check them out. She's the national director of The Remembrance Project. Go to therememberanceproject.org uh, and find out about the great work they are doing, uh, making sure we don't forget those who have been killed uh, by illegal immigrants, which are preventable deaths. Maria, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. You do the same. God all bless you. All righty.